What's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video and we are about, oh god, under a month away from UFC 4 and I made a lot of videos obviously on like things I want to see and things you guys want to see and I thought what I would do is I would kind of talk to you guys about Karimo. That's the biggest thing and I think it's going to be something you guys can really enjoy and I'm going to be talking about what my ideal career mode would be in UFC 4, some things I'd like to see them add and some things I'd like to see them bring back. So this is completely not related to things like gameplay. You know, we've seen the gameplay, and so we're not we're, we're not talking about gameplay today. Maybe a little bit, but not really. Uh, we're not, you know, I'm not talking about like how I want the game to run. This is things I want in the career mode that maybe are just like story based thing. Not so much story, but you know, you guys know what I mean. Anyways, I'm gonna stop rambling. First of all, one thing I know you guys want, and one thing I want as well, is real training. Uh, so we want. From like UFC 1, we want to be able to go on the pads, we want to be able to go back on the bag, go on the mat and tr practice our jiu-jitsu, things like that. Um, I definitely think that would be a good idea. Obviously in UFC 3, you just have to like say, to unlock new moves, it's like, knock your opponent down in 30 seconds. Which yeah, is, is cool, but it doesn't feel like you're really training in my opinion. So that would be cool. Maybe one thing is like, you can move camps, but not like in UFC 3 where you can just move like between a ton of camps maybe you can but they don't make a big deal out of it like you know what i mean like it's not every time you moved camp they made a big deal out of it on here's your ufc minute you know up rising star ray taylor moves camp kind of thing and it was and it felt unnecessary every time and then one thing i thought of that might be a bit risky that won't be happening but i just thought you know would you guys want to see this is maybe a weight cut you know you have to focus on your weight so you have to come in on the right weight so when you're doing your training you have like training points and training times so you then have to cut weight and make sure you do and obviously you can miss weight but it might put your popularity up by you know by hyping up the fight but then also you could lose some fans by missing weight one thing that we know that's going to happen is the wfa start off in a small circuit and small amateur circuits something like here in the uk we have cage warriors or what they're planning on doing i believe is wfa and then you have to have i want to be in these these smaller organizations longer i don't just want to do three or four fights and i'm pretty sure from what i saw in the ufc 4 beta there is actually a little section on like when you can track things you've done it says wfa belt one so that will mean that we will have to win a belt in the amateurs or in the lower organizations to actually get recognition so they have just two or three fights to then go to the ufc we're gonna have to win belts maybe win belt or win belts go you know like conor mcgregor when he was in cage wars he won two titles in two different divisions so maybe we have a chance to do that or we can say you know what i don't want to move up uh, when i'm at the wfa i'm going to stay down here at featherweight or whatever and then i'm going to i'm going to win the title and i'm going to defend it a couple of times then the ufc will come noticing uh, and then maybe they give you a choice do you want to pursue the ufc earlier like and risk kind of like I don't know what I'd, what would you call risk like kind of Sage Northcutt, Mickey Gow, like they went in early, they lost. You know, yeah, it was good because they got their popularity up, but they did end up catching a few L's along the way. So maybe they'll give you that choice, like you know, you are going to be fighting a much tougher opponent, so you could get an L. I mean, in MMA, get, losing is not as big deal as boxing. You know, in boxing, you're like undefeated is the main thing, whereas in MMA, there's so many ways to lose. No one really goes, oh, he's only 21 and 3 like oh he's got 3 losses like there's so many ways to lose it loss and losing doesn't really matter too much so maybe you have a choice if you want to pursue the UFC earlier or if they give you a a possibility like they say okay we're not you're not ready for the UFC but we want to put you in Tuesday night contenders or we want to you know do the apex arena with you um so maybe that'd be an interesting they do Dana's Tuesday white Dana white Tuesday night contenders or a series like that where they just say, okay, you're ready, but you're not ready for the big top boys of the lightweight division or whatever division you may be in. Um, and then maybe things like, depending on how your early career goes, your hype is increased going to the UFC. So it's not just a few thousand fans. Like, you might, you know, when Israel Adesanya came to the UFC, he had a lot of hype behind him. Uh, so, you know, it'd be interesting to see if you get, like, bang and knockouts. You get a few UFC fighters that kind of say, damn, did you guys catch WFA last night, you know? Um, so and so got an insane knockout or got a really rare submission or had an absolute three round brawl decision with someone or maybe then you know you have a three round decision it wasn't that interesting there wasn't many knockdowns you know it wasn't a brawl either you kind of just fought for points maybe then you don't get as much recognition for that people are like oh that's that guy kind of thing and you know there's a lot of people that come and watch Cage Warriors live whenever I go to watch it there's a good few thousand people there and whenever you you know you, you want to see uh, as much as 
you know, MMA has got so many aspects to it. You do want to see people get finished, just as a part of us, everyone that wants to watch someone get tapped, ground and pounded, knocked out, TKO, just we want to see it. So I think maybe things like that, submission, like, don't, for, you know, it's not just all about KOs. They got us, they, you know, the game needs to appreciate submissions and say, cool, he got, he got a twist up in like his third ever career win, or he's won all three fights by submission in the first round. Like that would get people's attention because they'd go, this guy has finished fights. Regardless if it's by submission, he doesn't let them go long. He beats people up, he takes them down, he makes them tap. So that would be interesting. And then once you go into the UFC, things I want to see are, I want to have proper record um, outlays. So they say, you know, uh, most title defences and it, it lists them so you can see where you are like not just number one not just most title defenders Demetrius Johnson like if you're number seven it will say above you is you know GSP or whoever it may be and I'll ask what I want to see so you you climb the ranks like how they have the records in NBA 2k that's how I want to see you climb the ranks fastest knockout all te top 10 of the fastest finishers Boom, 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 boom. And the number one, obviously, Jorge Masvidal. I'm not saying you're better to beat them, but my quickest knockout in a UFC game is about eight seconds. I got a spin and heel kick on Shogun Rua in UFC 2, I believe. And that was my... But no one cared. It was just like, oh, early in the first round. Like, eight seconds. Come on, bro. Like, show a bit more appreciation for that. So I'd like to see, like, records be um, more appreciated and, you know, like, things like uh, total significant strikes landed, total significant strikes thrown per minute. You know, real... Stat changes, things like you know, oh he's off, he's got more pace than Holloway. He, he you know, he's more con consecutive. Like he just go go go. He's like the lightweight Cain Velasquez before Cain Velasquez went downhill. You know, people thought his pace was just insane, and that's how I'd want to have my fight be recognised as like he's got an insane pace. His cardio is is crazy, uh, you know. But you know, maybe he doesn't have a good ground game or whatever it may be. But that's kind of I, I want everyone's fight to be unique and but you know, it's wishful thinking. I, I think. And then one of the things I'd like to see once you're in the UFC, like I was saying, is weigh-ins. I want to genuinely see weigh-ins. Um, I feel like they should do that if like there's a chance you can miss weight and stuff. Um, or at least just you, you can just choose to see your weigh-in and, you know, so then you know you've got a, a rest day um, afterwards. Uh, press conferences before and after the fight I want to see, win or lose, you know, not obviously early on because you're not, you're not going to have your UFC debut and be in a press conference like with, with um, you know, with... Adesanya and Costa and things like that. You're not going to be in those big press conferences. You're just not because you're not as popular. Uh, but I for sure, as you climb the ranks, I for sure like to see you actually be able to answer press conferences, choose how you answer questions that people give you. And another thing I'd like to see is Octagon interviews. I feel like that is sometimes the thing that gives people their popularity. They get in and they say something cool. Without Octagon interviews, there's a lot of things that wouldn't have happened. If, if Octagon interviews weren't a thing, Nate, Nate Diaz would have never called out Conor McGregor. Um, you know, he Nate Diaz would never had. Uh, I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. That classic thing. Um, you know, Brock Lesnar's thing where he took the horseshoe out and sh you know beat him over the head with it. Classic, you know, octagon callouts like that. And that's I think that's what we need. I think we need octagon interviews as as a big part of the game. I think we just need to feel more immersed in the world and like we generally are in the roster. But that's really all I have. Um, other, you know, there's a lot of gameplay things we'd like to see. But other than that, just aspects to the career that will make us feel more immersed and more into the world. I think these are some of the things that we definitely need. Uh, I definitely want to feel the progression and um, definitely feel like we are earning our way up. And yes, you can get. I do want like things like short notice fights, and you know that are increased risk. And you know, you may be a bit more fatigued on those fights because you haven't had as long to train. Things like that. But We'll have to see what it brings. I'll be for sure to um, post a full career. I'm going to be trying to get the whole career done in the first week of release. So make sure you guys stick around on the release day because I'm going to be putting four or five videos out that night. So make sure you guys uh, stay tuned for that. So yeah, thank you again for all the support on the videos. We've been hitting like 100 views in like an hour on each video, which has just been insane. So thank you guys for that support and I will catch you in the next one. Peace. So the fight goes the distance. We await the judge's decision here. I'm glad I'm not a judge, Joe. This is a fight that was close on paper. That is how it played out. It truly could go either way. Round two. Here is the shot that lands that causes that knockdown. All right, the official decision is in. It resides with the venerable Bruce Buffer.
Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. All three judges score the contest 29-28. To play the winner by unanimous decision, Cody Well, this is a man who can truly do it all inside that octagon, and he proved that yet again here tonight. Congratulations to the former UFC Bantam.